<laughs> and so, um, and so now, if we can, um, we do want to start the stories, right? Yeah. So, and so, I don't. So, who wants to start? And who's been impacted by Second Story? And who wants to say what it's been for them? And if there's pro people who identify as providers, think of questions that have been. story as part of the pro process of putting it all together and picking a house and furniture and all that good stuff. And, and, um, and then I went through, uh, I was also um, a data person for the second story and uh, I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and I was a client at second story. Um, more than once, and I think I also actually had gotten an extended stay once. Um, and uh, the, the thing is, is that I, I had never had been in the mental health system ever in my life. And I was robbed at gunpoint at my work, and uh, everything changed from that day on. And uh, I spent a lot of time in the psych ward here. Uh, the older one, um, and I saw the effects of the the you know reoccurring door going into uh, the psych ward, um, and I, I observed. I'm a good observer. I'm a pretty intelligent person. So, um, and then the third phase was um, I became a volunteer there. And I did a lot of art <clears throat> stuff, art, watercolor, or things like that. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. And some days, you know, nobody was there, and some days, everybody was there. And then sometimes, even if a staff member had a few minutes, they would sit down and do some art with me. Um, I'd also encourage that. Um, as far as um, what it's done for me, second story, uh, First of all, it has given me a community that I can relate to. I, like I said, I had never been in the system, so I didn't know how it was a little. Um, <laughs> but after uh, being evaluated by several doctors, uh, I was diagnosed with um, borderline personality disorder, which was a result of being a child in a very abusive family, um, on top of having ADHD and uh, or whatever else. Um, and as I worked through st uh, staying at Second Story, I, I became, uh, I trusted everybody. I started trusting. And I think that was the most important thing for me because when I was in the psych ward, I couldn't trust anybody. I, you know, I, I, I almost got beat up in my room in the bed one night, you know. So Second Story is that kind of place where you go and you walk in and you feel like you're at home. Um, if you've never been there, it's a regular house. There's no doctors running around. There's no blood pressure cuffs hanging out. <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing like that. Um, and the, the great part about it for me was two things. One, I could manage my own medications. And nobody was telling me when I had to take them and all that. Um, and if I needed help around that, I'm sure I would have gotten it. And um, uh, it also um, allowed me to have the freedom to continue on with my life while I was there. Um, there was times when I was in the psych ward where I was frantically going crazy how to get people to come to my house and take care of my animals and uh, you know, pay my bills. And, um, and nine times out of 10, when I walked out of that psych ward, I felt like a deer in the headphones at the front door. Like, okay, now what do I do? Whereas with Second Story, I was able to go to my house and feed my cat, you know, maybe take a nap in my own bed if I wanted to, uh, go to the beach, you know, um, 
The second story had some trips that they would take, walking trips and things like that. So the bottom line is that if I had a choice as a peer, I would never go back to the site for you. Mm. I would never. I would call second story before I would do anything else. Because I have a community of friends now that I trust. You know, and growing up in an untrusting family, this makes, it's like my family now. And I, I feel like I belong and I'm safe and I'm loved. Thank you.
Okay, so I just I just wanted to read something. Um, it's a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh. All the wonderful things that you are looking for, happiness, peace, and joy, can be found inside of you. You do not need to look anywhere else.
when we talk about collaboration, I think that's a really, really big thing. I was reminded, and collaboration came right here, the day that my mother said, hey, I saw you on the internet. I saw, I saw you and there was, there was a show, and it was Second Story, and the whole probation department saw it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how did you see it? You know, that was my question. And then I thought to myself, that means that the county saw it. That means that a lot of people that are trying to, it seems that we all have the same objective. I know that I would not have known that if I did not experience Second Story. Um, I think of Second Story as the liaison organization of a county-wide thing. We have, we have things like such as the housing, such as uh, going in and in and into the hospital, and what the effect is on people that are trying to, to provide services, as well as people that are receiving those services. And that's across the board in the county. And I think that on a really basic level, it's really magical. And it's really, really cool to be a part of that. And it's really, really cool to see my peers come up here and know that I'm a peer and I'm a part of something. And I'm also a part of a bigger community of peers. And so I just wanted to thank everybody for showing up here because that's what we need. It was a new birth into the mindscape of intentional peer support. I had been present at the planning group for the creation of a peer-operated respite house while I was attending the Mariposa Wellness Center in Watsonville, California during the early years of 2000. It wasn't until 2014 when Molly at the Rose Acres Board and Care suggested that I apply for the peer counselor position open at the Second Story Respite House in Santa Cruz, California. I had been working for Molly at my traveling barber service as a hair helper. I did apply and was very happy to be hired. I began to learn the practice of the principles of intentional peer support and there began my birth into the knowledge of the very greatly comprehensive method of peer counseling. <clears throat> After working a few months, I segued into their new management team and before long was enrolled in the required IPS training. This classroom experience is the greatest and most fun I've had in school. <laughs> now, I am a permanent part-time employee working one night shift a week and, as an on-call counselor, I'm expected to work two additional shifts a week if called on. One of the very special components of our respite house is that it has a two-story building. Its name, Second Story, is found throughout the How-To Manual Workbook created by author Sherry Mead. In it, we are taught how to write our second story. As an alternative to traditional mental health methods, peer support has the intention of discovering the story obscured by talking about what is wrong with me rather than what happened to me. And instead of moving away from the problem or its symptom, it's moving towards what it is we want to choose to create for ourselves and those in the world around us. Peer support is about creating mental health, but mental health isn't the opposite of mental illness. Trauma-informed peer support starts with the question, what happened to you, rather than what's wrong with you. We are looking at the root cause rather than trying to treat 
the resulting symptom with archaic methods like lobotomies, insulin shock, or heavy medications with devastating side and after effects. So now we have peer support. When we learn how to hear, not only how to listen, the untold account important to the peer appears, and we hear what happened and by empathetically validating the speaker, repeating back the, so what happened, moving towards where the person wanted to go in life. A personal focus plan can start to grow into an improved way of being. IPS teaches a wide range view of looking at many factors, looking at what they are present in the whole person, when someone is having a hard time functioning well in the world we share. Not everyone shares the same worldview of how things are. Holding multiple truths is another one of the four basic tasks of IPS. What is true for me may not be true for someone else. After many years of study of language, religion, and philosophy, that is, in the childhood bedtime lullaby, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. For me, it's true. And as in the fairy tales, and they all live happily ever after, is also an archetype of the truth. Someone else might believe differently that life is real, life is hard, and that when our bodies die, that is their final end. The first task of IPS is to connect with, create a relationship and reconnect with the peer. We are in relationship when there is a lack of understanding or an opposing view. It is a skill we practice, so to go on to a discovery of how our lives can come to an improved state of understanding and fulfill goals we may only dream of. A wise man once told me, if you don't have a dream, can't come true. <laughs> Please do what you, the hearer, are able to, to further our retelling our story frame in a new way, by keeping our second story working for the betterment of all of us both near and far. I hope this twice-born story, that second story, will continue as my born-again story has for me when I found new life in the religious sense of the Aramaic perspective 35 years ago. <coughs> As in church history, bishops have in turn consecrated more bishops. So have peer counselors educated peers to become peer counselors. <laughs> <laughs> and have thereby created jobs for many of us identified <laughs> as system of care clients. Yes. <laughs>
So we have about seven minutes or less before we start closing the ceremony. <laughs> so um, would, would anybody like to step forward and speak, maybe from the provider community or family, or family community? Hi everyone, my name is Jess, um, and I have a complicated relationship to Second Story because on the one hand I am an employee of Encompass also, I work for our supported housing program as a counselor, um, and on the other hand I am a neighbor of Second Story. Um, and I want to speak to the neighbor piece first because I feel like it's a, it's a really important one because there is such a huge stigma against mental health housing in your neighborhoods. You know, if you're not part of the mental health system, or even if you are, you know, oftentimes there's this idea that a mental health house of whatever sort, peer respite or, you know, peer clinical, uh, is going to somehow harm the neighborhood. And I'm here to tell you that that's not been true for, you know, my experience with Second Story. Um, and if anything, they're kind of the, the best neighbors in, that, in the neighborhood on the street. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm a little biased since I'm, I'm also co-workers with the peers that run the house, but I can, you know, any one of us that live on the street can go to them at any time of the day or night and, and be greeted with a smile and with, you know, out, out, outreached arms and they're always willing to communicate. They've also held um, community meetings and they've done like movie showings and stuff like that that I feel have gone, I think, a long way to showing that they're you know, a positive part of any community. And I think that that's gonna be a really scary and exciting thing going forward as the, as the peer support network grows and more houses like this pop up. Um, so again, very exciting because we're gonna start breaking down those walls of stigma. And also really scary because the backlash is, is really, really scary. Um, and so uh, part of this soapbox um, I'd like to ask that people, if you can and if you feel it, start having conversations with people about breaking down that stigma and, and really rehumanizing each other in any way that we possibly can. And then also as a, another service provider, so as a housing support counselor, I also have seen that some of my, my clients go to Second Story, uh, go in in a, such a locked down, shut down, hopeless state. And, and come back with renewed life, and that's been amazing. I also, I worked in, uh, in locked care for about five years, and walking into that work was really, in itself, dehumanizing to me as a staff member, so I can't even, I won't presume to speak for the clients themselves, but I can imagine, I don't even know how people get better in locked care, whereas I don't know how they couldn't get better at places like Second Story. Um, and so just that visceral feeling it's, it's so great to walk in a second story. It's, people smile at you, they look at you like you're going to be a friend, they know you are. And it's just great to feel that hope and that warmth there. Don't forget to sign in, everybody. <laughs> sign in. Make sure we sign in for seat. Sign Sign out and evaluation form, please. Great. So we so we have a, a sign out form. Sign sign out and evaluation form at the back. If you, if you can on the way out, it helps. It helps kind of give the county understanding of how how, how the training was, how the program oh. the day went. So you know we can we have time for one more person and and then we'll start to close. If there's one more person that wants to, to step forward and speak, then, then we can and will. and I'm fortunate enough to be one of Second Story's staff. I came to Second Story by accident, and because of that, I was convinced I was heaven sent. I landed in the middle of a social experiment full of love and kindness towards all others traveling the journey of life. While at Second Story, a co-worker asked me to take a survey for her daughter. Of course, I said yes. She asked a series of questions, and one of them was, how do you feel about being mentally ill? 
My response was, I never thought of myself as mentally ill. I felt like I was experiencing an emotional crisis, one that I sought support for, and started a healing journey to make me the compassionate person I am today. I had a really good support system and that made all the difference. Perception is very important. At Second Story, we hold the space and allow each individual to let unfold their healing journey. Second Story is a respite, a place of loving kindness through peer support. I am one of the newest staff members at Second Story. Even though I arrived quite by accident or by divine intervention, I feel fortunate and honored to be a part of this cutting edge approach to healing, emotional crisis and trauma. The guests at Second Story will tell you, if I didn't come to Second Story, I'd be in the hospital. It's an amazing transformation that can happen in a two week period. Not that guests are magically cured, uh, what we do is start to set a foundation of love and kindness through open communication, peer support, participation in house activities, chores, groups, meaningful connection with peer counselors and other peers. Our guests find their balance and start the process of regaining their self-esteem here. Guests come to believe that they can start anew and build a second story one with a view of their innermost dreams and aspirations, which may be a permanent job, a place to live, starting school, or just taking one class. While staying at Second Story, individuals have a nice, warm, clean, cozy environment packed with food and drinks, music, TV, and community activities. It's a place to heal, a place to catch your breath, Feel safe and get validated for who you are, a child of the universe. It's been shown that isolation is the true killer of the soul. With support, care, and concern, people thrive. The research results and the second stories of those individuals that you've heard today um, show that people are touched and healed by their experiences with second story. Our hope is that this model of healing emotional crises and trauma through loving kindness will take hold across the United States and beyond. The old model of stigmatizing and shaming people for having a mental health diagnosis is no longer valid. Approaching clients with dignity and respect goes a long way towards their healing and their opinion of themselves. And if we are accepted and treated with respect, it is easier for us to respect and love ourselves. It's contagious. Love is all there is, to quote a famous guitar player. <laughs> our hope for the future is that more people find out about our program and what we are offering. Our other hope, of course, is continuing funding, which I guess we got, which is wonderful. I am hoping that the research will be a strong indicator of the success we are experiencing. People's lives are being rebuilt and there is not hospitalization involved. We would like to see a kinder, less clinical, more pure counselor based interactions. That's what Second Story is all about. And with wonderful leaders like, um, like Adrian and Inbal who have given us so much support and believe in our our mission, they've helped us to move forward with this wonderful dream. Thank you all for being here. Okay, thank you everybody. And so, um, and so we'll now, the final descent is about to happen. We are going to land in 10 minutes and off into our day. Um, so I just wanted to say, uh, you know, that every, every story starts with kind of a, like a, uh, mm, it starts with a dream, but it also starts you with know, kind of a seed, quite, but like a grain of sand. So ev every story starts with kind of a grain of sand, and it was Sylvia Karras that kind of brought it to light in the community, and, and, and she's a, a peer activist, a leader in Santa Cruz, and been a long time, 
And then it took a family member as well, like a, a little bird or something, just grabbed the, grabbed the piece of sand and just fluttered along and, 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 and looking for a place to take that sand. And that was Jenny Gomez, and she, you know, wonderfully rest her soul. She was, she was in her place. And so, so that little grain of sand popped into Yana Jacob's office. Sees a computer, Yana's on lunch break or something. Sees a computer, just drops that little grain of sand right into the, the it's not an ink cartridge, it's now a typewriter. The, 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 not a typewriter, it's a keyboard. keyboard. Thank you. So right into the keyboard goes this little grain of sand. And Yana has no choice but actually just to start typing until that, key, until that grain of sand starts to break up into little particulates. Gets into the rest of the keyboard and gets into the computer and then starts getting into the consciousness of each and every one of us. So we've kind of, from seed to, from sand to bird to keyboard, to Yana actually bringing this program to, to Santa Cruz. And This is, this is, it was, it's a communal, a community, a community baby, and now it's a, a four-year-old toddler. And so I wanted to just offer Yana to be able to say the final words. And, and thank you. I mean, you've really, you've really, we've all been here together and working toward it together. But I just looking around the room and just seeing all the people that have been impacted by, by, by what this, what this dream is becoming and growing into. And it's only going to get better. It's going to get even, I mean, South County, okay, we can start moving to South County. You know, <laughs> San Lorenzo Valley, let's, let's start thinking. So, um, but we've got to um, just, and just to say that, you know, without the team too, everybody that has worked, and I just love to, for people to stand up for just a moment if you work at Second Story and, and are a part of it, because it's, it's so important. And that means everybody, even people in Star Trek, too. Thank you, Adrian. Um, that was a funny introduction. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my name is Yana Jacobs, and um, I had the honor of the seed that fell with Sylvia and another person at the state level who asked um, if I would write a grant uh, for SAMHSA to bring in a transformation grant for a peer respite that we needed one in Santa Cruz. Um, so I did a lot of research on what peer respites were about, and it really fit with kind of my belief system. At the time, I had been the chief of adult outpatient services, but always really a believer that the people who were the experts on wellness were the people we were serving. And so um, having a place where people could be supporting each other rather than going to places where other providers were telling people um, what was best for them just never really made a lot of sense to me because we were forgetting the expert in the room that was usually sitting with us. So peer support just seemed like it made sense. And we needed more peer support. We needed more of an active community of people speaking up. And so it felt like if we had a, a center and a place where people could really model peer support that we could grow that and build it in Santa Cruz and you know, in fact, I literally have been crying listening to them and give a presentation because it was the first time I'd heard sort of the outcome of what the vision was. And you know, we, there's a video of me opening with the grant in the community. We had a whole um, meeting at MH Can when when we got the grant. And I mean, I sat there believing that this was all going to be possible, but the reality is, I didn't really know. And I wasn't sure, but I, I had a lot of faith and belief that, that this really could work if the people rose to the occasion. And it's been probably the most interesting work I'd ever been involved with in my 30 plus years in the county. And it's just so incredibly heartwarming to see that it really did happen just like, just like we wrote about in the grant. And just exactly what I envisioned was gonna happen is really the results that Bevan was talking about, the, the things that people say when they go through this program are what we want people, you know, the word recovery has been out there and so overused that I don't even like it anymore. But what you're hearing from people's stories is this is what true recovery is about. I mean, people are just living their lives and taking away the labels and kind of the medical model that's been telling people forever that they're sick and that they have an illness and a disability you can't work with that as a provider because it's working against the grain of being a human being. 
And so when you get to work in a place like Second Story and people get to go to a place like Second Story, it starts to remove one of the biggest um, barriers that I think we all struggle with as providers, which is how do you sit there with somebody and help them when they're already in a one-down position and they've been told they have a serious illness and they have to live with it the rest of their life. It's such a hopeless kind of introduction to mental health. And it's really hard for the people at Second Story to undo that for people who have been in the system a long time. It's a lot easier for the young people who have come in and are allowed to stay a lot longer because they don't, they aren't ingrained with that message. So there's less undoing that has to take place. But um, I can't tell you how thrilled I am with everyone that um, the money came through. Because it, it's been more nerve wracking than a lot of you even realize that you know, it's an expensive program to run, and because it's a different model and they don't bring in half their revenue with Medi-Cal dollars like all the other programs, it makes it very expensive. And, you know, using Medi-Cal dollars will be a challenge because, again, that's the medical model and people are going to have to do that dance when that day comes forward, but I, I have faith that people will be able to be as creative with that as they've been with, um, you know, doing the work at Second Story. But um, it's really a. Re I can't. I'm just so relieved because we were all wondering, are they going to get the funding to be able to move forward? Because this is the culmination of the grant. We are at, in June, and the, the federal dollars go away on June 30th, and the county had to step up and take over the entire budget, and that's a, a huge budget to take over. And I'm so grateful that Eric, the, the leader of the mental health and substance abuse department really saw the vision and really believes in peer support and was here to um, support that because you, you don't know how fortunate you are to have a leader who got behind it 100% and was really trying to make sure that would happen. So you've got Mental Health Service Act dollars now that are going to carry you forward and you know who knows what the future is going to bring with um, the peer certification process that's going through the state now that's going to allow people with lived experience to have a, their own certification and their own classification for billing Medi-Cal that should change how they're able to do the billing so that it will support their, you know, who they are and their integrity to do so without making them into more of what, you know, we used to do, but bringing something new forward. Um, so I'm kind of rambling, but I'm just really happy that we made it through the grant and that the program really really lived up to what I wrote in the grant. It was just a vision at the time. We were the first um, peer respite in the state of California. We've had you know, the honor of hosting people from all over the state who've come to find out how we did it and they've wanted to replicate it in other counties. Um, what did you say, there's three more now that have opened up. I know there's numerous more that are in their planning process today and will be opening up. So you all should pat yourselves on the back. You were the cutting edge county that was able to demonstrate a peer respite in our state, and we're a pretty big state. And we are joined with all the other peer respites nationwide, and um, Adrian and other people communicate, and they share what's working and what their struggles are. And one more thing I want to share. Leisha, who was the, um, the evaluator at the beginning, and she wrote the evaluation section when I was writing the program piece, um, shared with me a story just last night that came in on, um, it was a Forbes story, and it was about open networks versus closed networks. And I was thinking about that today, because we were referred to as a hybrid, um, and that meant, you know, the pure peer respite was one that was a closed network. It was one that um, was only peers, and they had no county involvement, they had nobody that was touching it or doing anything to the program unless they had lived experience. And honestly, I didn't really agree with that, because I felt like if we were going to change the system, I've always worked from within, trying to change things and being part of it, and I felt like if we could have a program that could affect all of us and have an open system, we would learn a lot more, and we were all going to change together. If you have a little closed system of people with lived experience, then that magic that they're doing at Second Story, you wouldn't get the benefit of even knowing about it. And so we have these two systems working parallel, but they both be closed, and it would be kind of more of the same, us and them. 
And so it's been very challenging. I know for a lot of providers, they'd say to me, I don't feel welcome when I go to Second Story. You know, and I feel, feel like, well, that, now you know how the clients feel when they go to their place. They don't feel welcome either. And so there's been a challenge to try to work that out. You know, how do, how do the staff make the providers who really share the same common goal? Everybody is working in this field because we care about people and we want to help people. And I know that everyone who works in county mental health has that um, desire. And I think, you know, there's, it's, it's always been an odd thing to think that you can learn from the person who's been diagnosed and labeled, but I hope that a lot of the providers who have had the, the opportunity to go to Second Story have really had their eyes opened and their minds opened and realized there's a lot for them to learn and that we can all teach each other, that there's a sharing, and that to me is the beauty of the, the broader open network that's been created through the collaboration of having county and compass as a contract provider and the peers all working together and all having to solve this problem together and it's been hard but it's been really creative and you know it takes all these minds together to kind of solve the problems and i don't think you would have had this much success and be able to penetrate the system and continue to make changes as you go I'm hoping that the, the staff and the therapists who are sitting here are learning from what really works because if your goal is to help people recover and get out of the system and not be permanent you know, clients of the system, there's something you need to learn at Second Story because it works and Bevan was telling you about that. So you might want to get some of the, you know, the electronic version of what she shared and really read it over again and share it with others because you know, you go to trainings and you take classes and you read books and I think there's a lot of the answers are right here in your own community and I really encourage people to, to go and sit and spend some time there and if you really listen, you might really learn what, what it's all about. So thank you and thanks for making it happen. And we'll close the words. Hybrid Pride. <laughs> There's a lot of food too, everybody. If, we, if you need food, if you're hungry.